Bienvenue à tous. Welcome to reporters here on France 24. I'm Mark Owen. The security situation in Haiti has spiraled out of control since the killing of President Jovenel Moïse in July 2021. Since then, the country has been falling into instability, violence, and even more poverty. Today, unrest has reached such a level that the United Nations is on the brink of intervening, and it's been a total breakdown of governance. The country appears to be at the mercy of criminal gangs, and half the population is struggling to find food. Our reports by Emilia Fernandez and Margot Lozion. Back to square one. On this Sunday morning, dozens of Haitians have returned to Port-au-Prince. They tried to get to the United States on a makeshift boat, but it was stopped. We tried to leave Haiti for another country, but unfortunately the weather was not on our side and we were sent back. I'm a Haitian and I would love to live in my country, but the situation makes it impossible. There's no work here. The country's doing really badly. We're going to think about trying to leave again. We don't have work here, and there are lots of security problems. Disorientated and with no plan B in place, these men and women now have to face Haiti's harsh reality again. Jésumène René would leave if she could. A single mother, she lives in a 16-square-metre room with her three children and two other family members. They're internally displaced, having had to flee their neighbourhood, which is plagued by violence. Yesterday I was talking to my older brother, who was saying how we live in constant anxiety and how he has trouble sleeping because of the gunshots by the gangs and the fact that they even come into our homes. Last night he couldn't sleep from anxiety. We're not really living. We don't have a life. Jésumène works for a family in Port-au-Prince, but sometimes struggles to feed her children. She feels safer in this new neighborhood, but still worries about her family's future. The children loved their old neighborhood. They really did. I don't know if they'll want to leave the country when they grow up. I can't really imagine a future for them. Today I have white rice, rice with beans, red bean sauce, and vegetables. Daddy is also a single mother. She prepares and sells meals in the street. It's a struggle to keep her business afloat in a country where jobs are scarce. She says she's almost bankrupt. It's not easy investing in a business because you lose money. For example, this rice is very difficult to find and it's very expensive now. No one can afford even the most basic products. I prepare the meals, but few people actually buy them. I sell very little. Haiti imports all of its food. Inflation reached 49.3% in January, while the minimum wage is about $100 a month. The United Nations World Food Programme says almost half of the country is experiencing acute food insecurity. Jean-Marc runs a company that imports food for the whole country and employs about 600 people. The French Moroccan has been living in Haiti for over 30 years and has had to adapt to the crisis. Today, importing chicken makes up the bulk of his business, although he also has a more upmarket line of products, which he imports to supply the restaurants he owns in the capital. This is smoked salmon from Norway, and this is fresh salmon, salmon fillets, which we serve in all our restaurants. 
The businessman is pessimistic about the island's economic future. Problems of fuel supply, corruption at customs, lack of security are all in a day's work. No business wants to invest in Haiti. They are just the businesses that were already here that are just trying to survive and pay their bills, that's all. But at least in terms of food, no matter what, people will always need to eat. With the situation becoming unmanageable, Jean-Marc is thinking about retiring. We have about 30 trucks and we always run into problems. We have to have them escorted by the police. For the past few months, Jean-Marc has been living in the middle of his warehouse. As much as possible, he avoids leaving the fortress he's built. You see the wall there, it goes around the whole property. As you can see, I have armed security day and night and guard dogs that I let out at night. Haiti is considered one of the most dangerous countries in the world. There are believed to be more than 600,000 legal and illegal weapons in circulation in a nation of just under 12 million people. A hundred or so gangs are tightening their grip on the capital day after day, up against a weak and under-equipped police force. 18 police officers were killed in different clashes in the last week of January. A commissioner of the Haitian National Police agrees to tell us anonymously about their dangerous working conditions. There are parts of town where we simply can't enter without an armoured vehicle. We need the resources, equipment and vehicles that will allow us not to lose more areas of the city to the gangs. Some police officers are said to have links with the gangs. But here the law of a murder reigns. And it's the civilians who suffer most from this turf war. This hospital run by NGO Médecins Sans Frontières specializes in trauma and burns. The patient arriving this morning was attacked with a machete as he left his home. The reason for the attack is unclear, as is often the case. This is a case of a stab wound to the left upper limb region probably from a beating or, or a fight. James is a surgeon. He decides there's no need to operate on the patient, but his deep wounds will have to be closed. In his three years at the hospital, the doctor's seen all sorts of patients and tragedies. Violence doesn't spare anyone. This patient's case is quite exceptional. But we often see people who just happen to live in the same area as two rival gangs and are caught in the middle. It's often cases of collateral damage, or in some cases it's gang members. The hospital also treats victims of road traffic accidents or falls, but gunshot wounds make up 70% of its activity. The situation seems to have gotten worse in recent months. Before, it was gunshot wounds, mostly from small-caliber bullets, so they were low velocity. Nowadays, the patients we see have been shot with large-caliber bullets that leave larger wounds. So that means treating them takes much longer than before. In one of the rooms, a man has been hospitalized for four days. He'd been trying to avoid a roadblock set up by the armed delinquents who run the neighborhood he lives in. The thugs started questioning me. One of them said, I'll shoot you. And the other one said, climb that wall. I decided to do what he said. When I got to the top of the wall, one of them said, 
If you don't want me to shoot you, jump down to the other side. So I jumped from a great height and I heard both my legs break. The gang's violence seems to have no limits. They now control more than 60% of the capital. From the NGO's headquarters, the head of mission at Médecins Sans Frontières said that the rapid expansion of armed groups was disrupting the day-to-day -day running of hospitals. Raoul Pierre-Louis Raoul Pierre -Louis is the clinic where we had to suspend service last week. After armed men stormed us to seize a patient, to execute him just outside the hospital. The red zones on this map show the areas of the city in the hands of gangs. To make this report, we were only able to go to the white parts. That same morning, at the radio station where writer Lionel Trouillot hosts a weekly programme on Haiti's cultural life, the atmosphere is heavy. What do you think of the country we live in? Well, on a personal level, my best friend Pierre Bouteau was freed by his kidnappers last night in exchange for a big ransom. And then, this morning, some armed thugs entered a school and demanded money. Kidnappings are part of everyday life in Port-au-Prince. They're the main source of funding for gangs, who use the ransoms to buy weapons. There are at least two or three hostage takings every day. How is it possible to be a young woman in the Haitian artistic context with all the self-perpetuating systems of domination? That day, Lionel and his guests are discussing the place of women in the Haitian artistic world. A twofold problem for a country where cultural life has all but disappeared and where violence against women continues to grow. It's really important that we have this sort of show because we discuss as Haitians what we want to make of this country. We have a government, if you can even call it that. It has no legitimacy and doesn't convince anyone in Haiti and needs a foreign force to support it in order to legitimize its existence. Lionel is talking about the government of Ariel Henry, who was nominated as Prime Minister by President Jovenel Moïse two days before the latter was assassinated in July 2021. Henri is deeply unpopular in his country. He's accused of being in the pay of the United States and in favour of foreign intervention, a way for him to postpone elections and hold on to power. Former Senator Jean-René Senatus founded his own political party two years ago. He condemns the disappearance of political life on the island. The last time elections were held was 2016, and since January, the country no longer has any elected representatives, national or local. Today we are supposedly being led by a de facto government, a government that's plagued by a lack of legitimacy and legality. No institution is currently working. So it's in this government's interests for the current insecurity to last. To have credible elections, the first thing we need to respond to is the security situation. We meet up again with Lionel Trouillot, who, like every Thursday afternoon, is running a writing workshop, during which participants discuss literature and their lives. We have sometimes talked about that in connection with Creole poetry. All of them write, whether it be for local press or publishing houses, their main inspiration is the same, everyday life in Haiti. We live in Haiti in the Haitian reality, both in what is unacceptable about it and how we dream of changing it. But many no longer want to wait for the dream to become reality. The migration office is overwhelmed by the number of citizens trying to apply for a passport. Since January, Haitians have been included in an American program, allowing them to enter the United States legally. Some no longer believe that their country can get better, like this young man who agrees to talk to us as long as we don't show his face. It's hell right now. Everywhere. 
you, can, you will find a cell of gang. And like this time, we are we, we, like we are trapped in the prison. All right, we can do nothing. Right? We do not. We don't. We do not need uh, a army, a bunch of uh, like I said, tank or uh, other guys, marines to come here to. No, no. We don't. We don't want that mess. Stay or go? Will there be a foreign intervention? Will elections be held? The country's future has never been so uncertain. The UN recently sounded the alarm over a situation that's getting worse every day, pleading for Haiti not to become a forgotten crisis. And of course, we're watching for all developments on that situation in Haiti. Thank you very much for watching this programme. You can see it again, of course, on our website, france24.com. This is Reporters on France 24. Do stay with us.